Easy. Now you try. First, get a jar. <laughs> 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 Hello everybody, my name is Bricky, currently serving 10 to life for dropping a kid in a balloon enclosure, and you want to know the exact image that pops up to my head whenever I think about procrastinating during econ in senior year. There's actually three images, this is one of these images. You've also got this image, and you've also got this image. However, we're not talking about those last two images today, we're talking about that first image. We're talking about the number one best way to make sure a kid does not pay attention during senior year of high school, my senior year of high school, class of 2013, and and that is a funny little monkey game called Balloon Tower Defense. If you're unfamiliar, Balloon Tower Defense 6 has been popping up, you know, kind of cropping up on Twitch a little bit, not hitting like number one or anything of that nature, but it's been popping itself up there a tiny little bit. Is this a good thing? Absolutely. Am I a little salty about it? Because I've been streaming it off and on for about three years right now, a teeny bit. If you were like me, you know, Class of 2013, Halo 3, Modern Warfare 2 were the real big games of your time, and those two games taught you something that school would never just teach you. They, school would never teach you how to perfectly throw a sticky grenade on a friendly banshee because some guy got into it about 0.3 seconds before you did and you're very upset about it. Or, especially in Modern Warfare where it taught me a myriad of racial slurs I will never forget because the English teacher was too much of a bitch to teach me. Yum, 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 I eat dick all day. Balloon Tower Defense, Balloon Tower Defense 5 in particular taught me a very important factor of life. And it's that even just a little bit of monkey is a good enough amount to just tank your grades. And also anything past around 125 would tank you your phone. But to the uninitiated, this is just a weird game where a bunch of monkeys throw sharp objects at balloons, but it is so, so much more than that. But kinda more so because it's a not so hidden gem, and I think people are starting to realize that more. But first, before we talk about the modern day monkey, we must discuss the history of the monkey. <laughs> Balloon Tower Defense started as a much more simple game, just titled Balloons, and I have no idea what I would call this genre of Flash games at the time, but I'd call it like Angry Birds spin-offs. It probably came out before Angry Birds, but it's that simple kind of thing where you have a whole bunch of enemies or, or objects you have to hit, and you have to angle up. In this case, it's a monkey with a dart. Why is it a monkey with a dart? I don't know. I'm assuming it has to do with those carnival games, you know, where you threw darts at balloons and stuff, and this is just like that on a wide scale. So what you would do is you'd angle the dart, you throw it at it, and that was the game. That was balloons. It was very simple, it was cute, but you know, it didn't really last very long in the world of Flash games. It really didn't have the staying power of like your line riders, right? Just absolute titans. Now that was back on NinjaKiwi.com, and while NinjaKiwi is absolutely a fantastic hub for all your Flash games, it wasn't quite StickPage.com. You had NinjaKiwi, it was cool, it was fun, you had your balloon games, but you, then you had StickPage.com, and... You can't beat that. You just can't. Now, balloons would go on to be quite a success with other titles known as Balloons, More Balloons, Even More Balloons, Balloons Sanity, Balloons Junior, Balloons 2, Balloons 2 Christmas Pack, Balloons 2 Spring Fling, Balloons Player Pack 1 through 5, and also, of course, Balloons Pop 3. However, the true game, Balloon Tower Defense, would come out in 2007 as well, once again, the Year of Kings, and provide the first time that you could take that balloon popping power and instead bring it on the usual Tower Defense format. Now when you used to go on all these internet sites, your Ninja Kiwi, your stick pages and so on, tower defense games were extraordinarily popular. Maybe because of their replayability or maybe because they weren't too difficult to actually, I don't know, create, run, whatever. But also these games were pumped out extremely fast because these were just quick old flash games. And so Balloon Tower Defense 2 came out, I believe in the exact same year, 2007. And then Balloon Tower Defense 3 came out in 2008. Eight. However, it was changed now to not Balloon Tower Defense, but now Balloons TD3, because I guess Tower Defense Lost Earth said it infringed on their copyright. Tower Defense. Fucking pricks. Now, Balloon Tower Defense 4 would come out in 2009, also a huge year of kings for video gaming. Balloon Tower Defense 4, however, was one of the things that would really get turning, you know? You'd be able to not only have the game be quite popular, but also it was released on iOS the following year, which was actually huge, because the ability to do this tower defense game on a mobile phone not only allowed you to, one, play it during lunchtime, sitting down in the middle of the grass while your friends are hanging out, but two, create the portability allowed for a very simple game like a tower defense game, which is very easy for a kind of touch screen style phone. Then the big boy came, the BFG, if you would, and that would be the fantastic Balloons Tower Defense 
five. This, if I'm not mistaken, is when they unleashed the unlimited round of variants, which allowed you to just constantly free play for as long as you could. Back in the back then, you had your difficulties, you had your easy, your mediums, your hards and all, and they would have changed things like price and power, but I don't believe there was a free play. And if there was a free play, it surely wasn't as robust as the Bloon TD5 was. It allows you to just keep on going and fighting numerous kinds of different kinds of balloons, different kinds of blimps, even super high level enemies that you eventually had to deal with that really got you going and going and going and would crash your phone like mad. It also was added to Steam in 2014 in case you were a procrastinator like me. And honestly, I remember very fondly of having some of the more easier maps on my phone and getting to around 170 and such to the point where every time I tried to open the level, the game would automatically crash and send me back to my, you know, normal wallpaper on my phone. I sunk days of my life in the Balloon Tower Defense 5. See, okay, every Friday night, uh, we would go to my buddies named Jaren's house, right? A shout out to you, Jaren, if you're watching this. But we would all go out and we all go end up into his loft, like the six to seven of us, 14 to 15 year old kids. We'd all just play games hardcore into Friday night, really late into the night, right? We would go out and we'd play like uh, Balloon Tower Defense 5 on like three separate laptops. All of us were playing Blue Tower Defense 5. Uh, we would play some Call of Duty Zombies, some Halo. We would go on Omegle and ask for nudes. Play Mortal Kombat 9 so we could play Sonya, so we could stare at Booba. Uh, Mortal Kombat 9 had a lot of Booba. The things have changed since Mortal Kombat 9. So often, there were like two to three of us constantly playing Balloon Tower Defense, the hours and hours and hours in the night on an old laptop that would sound like a jet engine after two hours of Balloon Tower Defense. It was ridiculous how much we played that game. This is also when we had a shared Xbox account that we all played, like had like a shared username uh, at his place, and that name was a randomly generated Microsoft username under the name Bricky Orchid 8 which was my original channel name, which I have shortened to Bricky. And now at an awesome merchandise store where you can get fantastic apparel like t-shirts, hoodies, uh, scarves, mugs, stickers, etc. over at Orchid8.com. And for a while, Balloon Tower Defense 5 was the final entry into the series. And this went on for quite some time. And it could be because, you know, Flash games weren't really as big anymore. Or maybe they just were making enough money off of it. As far as I'm concerned, they made a lot of money. But now... We live in a Bloons golden age because in 2018, Bloons Tower Defense 6 was released. And oh man, did it change the monkey world forever. <laughs> Bloons Tower Defense 6 was released June 14th, 2018 on mobile devices and on Steam in December in the same year. They added so many new abilities, missions, units, heroes, uh, knowledge, uh, challenges, Upgrades, powers, abilities, uh, uh, branching paths and tiers, and and I haven't even described how to play Balloon Tower Defense yet. Oh shit, back up, roll it back. Bloons TD is played on a linear track. Like most tower defense games, it is as it sounds. You build towers in order to defend from an oncoming amount of units. Now, these, of course, balloons, not spelt balloons, but balloons, why, I don't know, copyright maybe, would go in through one side of a track and then end on the other side of a track. And during this period of time, of course, they would get faster and stronger as time goes on, and your job is to place down different kinds of units, which just so happen to be monkeys and other variations of monkeys, to pop these balloons as they go through. Now, as they start on off, you have just like your average tower, like a good old dart monkey. He throws a little dart and you can upgrade him with different kinds of upgrades to make his darts sharper to pop more balloons or perhaps give him increased range or increased uh, fire rate. And you can really keep the upgrades going like this. In fact, every single tower in the entire game has three separate upgrade paths. Between the tack tower, the glaive thrower, the mortar monkey, the helicopter monkey, or the soup bar monkey, they all have different kinds of tier paths that you can go through. However, you can only go through two tier paths at a time. So the moment you go through one of them, you have to choose which of the other two you want. And that one could only be upgraded two times. So the best you'll ever get for a monkey upgrade going up all the way to five would be like 520 or 502 or 250. This helps you pop the various kinds of balloons that'll be coming down your track. Now it starts off simple. You get your good old red balloons. They're very slow and they just take one pop to be taken down. Eventually though, as time goes on, you get hit with blue balloons and blue balloons actually move a little bit faster 
and they have a red balloon inside. So when you pop the blue balloon, it actually just reveals a red balloon, which does move slower, but it's still another balloon to pop. And then you've got the green balloon that has a blue balloon and a red balloon, and then a yellow balloon that has a green balloon and a blue balloon and a, and a red balloon, and then a pink balloon that has a blue, yellow balloon that has a green balloon that has a blue balloon that has a white balloon. I, I mean, I mean, a red balloon. And then you have white balloons that are immune to freezing and black balloons that are immune to explosives. And then you can have zebra balloons that are immune to both. And you have ceramic balloons and, and rainbow balloons and fortified balloons and and it just doesn't stop and it keeps getting harder and they keep getting faster and they keep getting crazier you got regeneration balloons camo balloons blimps it just does not stop it will keep on going to a ridiculous nature and as you do this you need to keep building up those towers like i said you could increase the sharpening power the sharpening you can make your things sharper to increase its popping power so sometimes there might be a blue balloon but because of your power and your sharpening you can instantly just take out that blue balloon. Blue, 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 blue balloon. This should be obvious, but when they get to the other side of the track, you lose lives and then you lose. Now, how do you get more different kinds of monkeys, different kinds of towers? Well, you use it with your money, which you get from popping balloons. As you pop balloons, you get more cash. And as the round ends, you can also get more cash from that as well to allow you to purchase more upgrades and purchase more towers. Now, for things that Balloon Tower Defense 6 does differently than 5, there are actually many avenues. One of my favorite ones by far is the fifth tier upgrade for your towers. Back in the day, you could only go up to about four tiers, and the fourth tier was pretty dang powerful. And now you can still do that, but now there is the elusive fifth tier in each kind of upgrade. Sure, you could have your good old dart monkey, and sure, you could make them into a juggernaut spike thrower on the fourth tier of all of their upgrades, but then you can get your ultra juggernaut, which completely changes the way the tower works and makes it like 10 times more deadly. You could have your regular attack tower, and on the top path, you can get to your crazy, you know, ring of fire where it's all burning and does a great job at melting like lead balloons and stuff, but then you can get your big, big inferno ring, and that thing is nuts. You can only have one copy of each of these individual tier five towers though, but I implore you that while expensive, they are almost always worth it for the sheer amount of damage and power they put out. You also had hero units that was added to Balloon Tower Defense 6. This is a kind of a monkey that has different kinds of prices and different abilities that you can use depending on, well, actually not depending on anything. You can use them in pretty much every single scenario you want and they can have great upgrades. Like the druid one can help out other kinds of druids. You can have a tank one. You can have a drone one that allows you to detect camouflage and things of that nature. The only downside is that, of course, each of these have a voice actor or actress, and they all suck. Turn off the, the hero dialogue. It is so bad. You can also get upgrades through monkey knowledge, which is the... Monkey knowledge. <laughs> I'm doing a serious review for Balloon Tower Defense, and I'm saying words like monkey knowledge and and uh, the Gatling monkey and the super monkey. <laughs> monkey knowledge, you get you get an XP, and it's like permanent upgrades for your stuff, you know, whatever. And then you got difficulty modes, like you got easy, medium, and hard. And easy only goes up to 40 rounds, but medium 60, hard 80, and also the cost of your towers gets up, up, up as the difficulties get higher. But that's not the end for your different kinds of challenges. You've also got like on easy mode, you can do primary only, only primary monkeys, or only military, or only wizard, depending on which tier you're currently utilizing, being normal, easy, or hard. Hard. You can have half cash, which fuck half cash. All my homies hate half cash, or double Moab HP, or perhaps uh, different kinds of alternating balloon rounds. This can get pretty difficult. And there's also the number one greatest test of monkey skill, which is chips. No continues, no hearts lost, no income, no monkey knowledge, no powers, and no selling chimps. Basically, you get your bare bones stuff. You can't get any extra money for the uses of farms or anything of that nature. You only have one health. You can't get any more of them. You can't sell your stuff. You can't uh, continue by using your monkey cash or anything. And you can't use any of your powers you've accumulated. And you also don't get any of those monkey knowledge benefits. Chimps is a true monkey testament to your power as a general. And if you do beat chimps, you get this awesome looking little black border around your uh, around your level. I got a couple of them. I only got a thing about four. It's, it's really fucking hard. I have a really hard time with chimps and it only gets hard depending on the map. These are all beginner maps, easy maps. They get tougher, you know? Bloody puddles, fuck bloody puddles. 
My homies hate bloody puddles. And all this makes the game really replayable, but it's also the combos. It's also just like the combat. The combination of monkeys all together, like, do you want to do the Druid Death Star build, where you get the ability called Pop Lust that allows all these Druids to attack faster and more powerfully when there are more Druids nearby, and even to get something as crazy as the Avatar of Wrath, the fifth bottom tier of the Druid, or the Oni Master Bomber Ninja, which is really good at taking out different kinds of blimps, or, or perhaps, you know, we can always have a little bit of a, a oh, come. The variety of these monkeys is really what gets it interesting. And it's kind of fun because even the artwork is surprisingly impressive. You can have your basic little monkey plane, but then you turn it into an AC-130 and then you turn it into an even bigger AC-130. Or you can have your monkey helicopter, which just looks as he is, and then he becomes an Apache. Or perhaps you have, you can have turn Batman, Super Monkey into a Batman. Or, or one of my personal favorites is the a monkey alchemist, the balloon master alchemist, because he looks pimpin. It's kind of funny too, because it has almost something for everybody. Like if you're the kind of guy who really enjoys just going as far as possible, the endless mode really provides a consistent new amount of challenges as the different rounds go up. If you're the kind of person who really enjoys like a very hard challenge and you want to truly be tested on your monkey skill, any of the abilities like chimps or hashtag ouch and all those other crazy different levels will truly test your skill as a monkey general. And for me, I'm the guy who's all about the grind, you know? I really really enjoy playing games like Call of Duty even to this day because you can work for your like dark matter camo or something. You can constantly grind and you can really try to see the fruits of your labor in that way. Monkey knowledge, all the new upgrades and buffs, seeing the banners and stuff around the different levels, that all speaks to me pretty well. I love this game. I love the silliness. I love the design. I know that 125 hours might not seem like a whole lot in terms of the grander scheme of video games, but for just a single player, I mean, there's multiplayer, but you don't really do it. Monkey flash game, 125 hours, that's... That's, that's pretty monkey. This is probably why it was building up a following on Twitch for a little bit, you know? People were actually starting to realize that it's really fun. There's a lot to do and the challenge can be quite impressive. Also, Balloon Tower Defense is like, when you stream it, it's more of a IRL stream with monkey in the background. You know, it doesn't really feel like you're playing a game. It's more just talking to people while stuff goes on because that is the kind of game that it is. However, I don't think it's ever going to really like be constantly on Twitch or anything because it's not the Twitch formula. High stakes, high octane gameplay is the Twitch formula. That's why things like team-based games like League of Legends, Rainbow Six, Counter-Strike, Valorant are so big and also high risk as in things like, you know, Battle Royale games. It's the reason why they're all so damn popular. So it probably won't last very long, uh, but it's still a damn fun game and normally this is when I would recommend it to you but I don't know if I should because you don't have self-control I know you I, I see you I see you down there and all around here I know you don't quite have self-control can you truly be trusted with this can I no you want it I want to give a big thank you to all of you who watched this video and a huge thank you to all of my patrons and those of you who have signed up for the YouTube memberships program, which has launched now on both this channel and my second channel. If you want to support me on there in case you're maybe not a fan of Patreon or, you know, just you prefer having little emotes down there in the bottom as well and having little names and such, go ahead. It is completely optional and up to you. But and real, if I'm being honest, there's really no reason for me not to at least open up the avenue. So it is there as it is. And we also have a couple benefits along with the patrons, like questions being asked. You'll get your name flying up here like the rest of you. And also access to the Discord as well. So speaking of that, I actually take questions from my patrons in the Discord, and I have a few of them right now. Our first question is from Hexavio. What is your go-to listing material when painting miniatures? It depends on what I'm feeling. Sometimes I listen to the zombie soundtrack, like the old Call of Duty zombie soundtrack. I just like them. They're really good. Uh, sometimes I'll find like your usual like lo-fi hip-hop thing sometimes, but I like to I like to do it with a twist. I'll try to find a little bit of, of a way to adjust it, maybe add a little bit more strings to it or or the ones that do like choir I don't know just just kind of like something a little different than your average like random anime girl studying type things you know me Ridley asks do you have hopes for the next Mass Effect project that's currently in development and what would you like to see personally I mean 
I mean, Subverse is doing everything I want in my space alien games, so... <laughs> At this point, if you gave me a Mass Effect gotcha game, I'd probably play it, because I'm just so starved for Mass Effect content. I'm a super big Bias fanboy, so I'm not quite sure. Uh, though I am definitely tempering my expectations for both the Legendary Edition as well as the new Mass Effect title, because I just... I don't have a lot of faith. And so maybe I'll enjoy myself more when they come out if I think they're going to be fives out of ten uh, and they end up being a six. All right, there's a lot of construction going on outside, so I'm going to call this one here. I'll see you all next time in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.